Well, hello there, and welcome to La Rosa Reads. I'm Denise La Rosa, and today I will share with everyone what I read in the month of July. Let's wrap it up. So I read six books in the month of July, and the first one that I read is a surprise favorite. You will see more of this one, Miss Benson's Beetle. I have never read a book by Rachel Joyce, but let me tell you something, as soon as I finished, no, I don't even think I finished Miss Benson's Beetle whenever I just hopped over to Goodreads and fo started following her, found all of her books, and just was like, want to read, want to read, want to read. Who would have thought that your girl would have fallen in love with a book about an older British woman in search of a rare beetle. But Rachel Joyce, she made it happen. So Marjorie is a very interesting character. And when I say interesting, I mean that she is a very plain person, very awkward, quirky, and had a very traumatic beginning years to her life. Both of her brothers were tragically killed um, fighting in World War II. Her father died tragically. I'm not going to give you any spoilers about that, but it happens early on in the book. And her mother just lives, she just exists until she dies. And so Marjorie was basically raised by her two aunties who were um, really devout Christians. I believe they were Catholics. Um, I believe they were really devout and practicing Catholicism. And she just grew up being very awkward. Now her father, right before his death, he and Marjorie were going through this book about rare creatures. And there was this rare golden beetle that he was talking to Marjorie about. And she became obsessed with the thought, the idea of discovering this beetle and sending it to like the National Science Museum or something or other. And like, you know, being able to find it and, and give it a name because I guess it was so rare, it wasn't in the museum yet. And they were hoping that someone would discover this beetle. So she's searching for someone to be her assistant on this journey and falls upon this very eccentric, very eccentric woman by the name of Enid Pretty. And she is not trained. Uh, she is not trained for this gig at all. But what comes out, what blossoms is a an unlikely friendship that transcends time transcends circumstances and there's also this other character that is just chasing them i'm not going to tell you why he is he's like following them and tracking them down and so it's hilarious so this book had a lot of different things going on it was deeply emotional deeply moving there were moments where i cried there were tons of moments where i laughed till i cried so Rachel Joyce did an impeccable job of writing such beautiful, profound prose and also hilarious moments and just taking you on an emotional ride that is just so memorable. This is one of those books that I'm going to always remember. It's forever seared in my mind, forever living in my heart. Loved Miss Benson's Beetle. All right, then I participated in Jane Austen July. Shout out to all of you who did that. I had never read a Jane Austen novel until the month of July, and I read Pride and Prejudice. I'm not going to go into a synopsis of a classic. Um, if you know, you know. If you don't, you can find out. <laughs> um, but I will say that I was a little intimidated to start. Now, I also am someone who was surprised to experience that I absolutely loved Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. And so I had a feeling that I would dig this, but I was a little intimidated. However, it didn't take me long to get into and have a general, generic understanding of the language and 
um, the era. And my, oh my, did this book just blow my mind because for it to be written at the time that it was written with such empowering language, an empowering story for women, I was like, geez, Jane Austen was ahead of her time. So I loved it. I gave it five stars and I'm so grateful that I participated in Jane Austen July. The third book that I read in the month of July was Yinka, Where Is Your Husband, Girl? I have to give a shout out to Lizzie Damiola Blackburn for this debut novel that was so fun. I found myself just loving on Yinks. I found myself yelling at Yinks. I found myself giving Yinks the side eye. I found myself wanting to give Yinks a hug. Yinks being Yinka, Yinks is her nickname. But all in all, I loved Yinka and I was cheering her on all the way. So aunties are all around her and she is a British Nigerian woman in her 30s. And so when I say aunties, these are women that aren't necessarily her relatives. They are older women um, within her community that are part of her life and helping her along her journey through life as a woman in the world. And so all of these aunties are just pushing her, especially her mom. So in addition to the aunties, her mother are pushing her and like, Yanka, like, boo, what's up? You got this great career, but you need a man. And she really ended up losing herself in trying to find a man. So she is a darker complected woman. So we're talking about colorism in this book. We're talking about the fact that she identifies as a Christian and has made choices about love and romance that may seem very traditional and outdated, but matter to her. And then you have these men that I found to be very important side characters in addition to the aunties and her sister and her mother, these men that she crosses paths with, Donovan, Marcus, Alex, um, I'm missing someone, Femi, her first boyfriend, they all play a significant role in helping her to reconnect with herself. And I absolutely found this to be enjoyable. I read it on the beach. You will be seeing more of this book on my channel. Such a good time. Love, Dinka. Where is your husband? And I was just having a Nigerian party in July because immediately following Yinka, Where's Your Husband, I read the Reese's Book Club selection, Honey and Spice. And Blue, oh my lord, I knew, so I knew of Blue's previous work. It was, um, it's a collection of short stories titled Love and Color. And it's been on my TBR. I love the cover, I love the synopsis, the whole idea and concept of the book and I don't know what's prevented me from getting the book but when I tell you after I read Honey and Spice I was like take a look at this author's name this is going to be an author well this is an author that's going to go down as one of the most gifted authors of our time I don't say that too often but her writing was just impeccable so clever so moving, but yet the sense of humor that she has to have, she was so quick with the comebacks, the clapbacks, it was just so good. So Kiki is a British Nigerian college student. She's at the uni, living her life, and she has a radio show, a college radio show, where she's giving love advice to uh, the black young women that are attending this university and she's very confident spicy hello and just is really not playing around with these guys like she sees them and i mean she really sees them so then she stumbles upon a sweet hence honey sweet fine young man that is the new catch on campus by the name of malachi and long story short, they kind of, it's not that they clashed ever, but when they met each other, there was this fire, this chemistry 
that came from their banter with each other. She never had really met her match until she met Malachi. He's also talented, um, has aspirations of becoming a film director, a filmmaker. And I don't want to share too, too much because it just takes off from there. And the way their relationship continues to evolve is just a delight to partake in. It's so delightful. Um, the only thing that I have to say about this book that I wasn't crazy about is I felt like it was so, the characters were so real and deep, yet fun and relatable. And then the ending was a little too rom com -y. I didn't really have rom-com vibes until the end. And to me, the ending was just so over the top. And I was like, seriously? Like, it didn't have to be over the top. You know, it could have been a very, like, even, chill ending. And it would have still been delicious. But, you know, what do I know? But I do know this. I enjoyed Honey and Spice. I finished passing. Yay. Oh my lordy, y'all. Passing. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. This book, I think ever since I've started booktube, I've been at least interested in this book, talking about this book, and it's been collecting dust on my shelf. And thanks to Kelly at Books That I'm Not Reading and Sandy over at Miss Reads A Lot, I had accountability partners, buddy read partners to read passing and oh my lordy, it was a wonderful, wonderful classic work. A reading experience that I will never forget. So there's Irene. Irene is, I think it's safe to assume, a fair skin, light skin, black woman hailing from Chicago. Growing up with a woman, at the time a young girl, by the name of Claire, who, long story short, mysteriously disappears from the community. There were rumors about her, and Claire and Irene run into each other, and, um, yeah, they both were passing as white to get into this restaurant, so that's how they ended up seeing each other. But Irene was only passing from time to time for conveniences, like going to restaurants, whereas Claire was passing as white and married to a white man, like fully passing. I just don't wanna tell you too much more than that because from there, they are reconnected and it gets messy, y'all. I didn't expect this book to be so messy. I knew it was gonna be intense just with the concept of passing. It's a heavy topic. It has the, uh, the potential to be a very deep, heavy um, topic and conversation to have from reading a book about it. But this book was like fun. And I just, it was a page turner. So the ending, whoo, the ending. Y'all have to read Passing. It's a five-star read for me. I predicted it to be a five-star read, and here we are. I am so proud of myself for finishing this book. Last but not least, we have a nonfiction book. I've kind of, um, this summer, I, I, apparently I needed an escape because the month of July, I didn't think I was gonna read any nonfiction until I realized, oh yeah, I am a member of a professional organization where I am on the advisory council and support and offer advice and coordinating and coordinating a summer book study. And this is the book that we are reading. It is Think Again by Adam Grant. Now we have one more book meeting together, summer book study meeting in August. However, I finished the book totally in July. Adam Grant has a way, this is my first book by Adam Grant, and he has a way of conveying such important research-based information, deep psychological information and truths and aha moments in a way that is so tangible, accessible, relatable, 
he's brilliant. I, I found his writing to be so refreshing. And I was just filled with so many moments where I was like, yeah, like I highlighted this book and it brought back memories of my doctoral studies where, you know, if I was reading a really good piece of research, I would just tear up the, like the whole thing was highlighted. But, you know, I have quite a few highlights here. The way he breaks this book down into parts, it's all about us re, um, really embracing the idea of rethinking and not getting so entrenched in our own beliefs and our own knowledge that we don't leave room for flexibility, adaptability in relationships in both professional and personal areas of our lives. So there's three parts. This book is broken up into three parts. The first part is about individual rethinking, which I always believe in starting within, right? So he's starting with a very important call for us to be introspective and examine the ways that we think and our beliefs about rethinking. And then part two is interpersonal rethinking, interacting with others in a variety of contexts. So how do you engage in those difficult conversations that you may have very strong beliefs um, and opinions, whereas you should also be open to knowing that your opinions aren't necessarily, like they can change, but how do you have these opinions and, and articulate them, and express them and communicate them in a way that you can de debate in a way that brings people in, that you're offering care and truly listening to people who maybe don't believe or think the way you think, because that's an important, it's an invaluable tool, invaluable quality to have um, in relationships, in life, and, and professionally as well. If you're gonna accomplish anything in a team or in a group, you need to be able to have that skill. And then finally, collective rethinking. So this is talking about, um, again, those difficult conversations, teaching students to question knowledge. I am so big on that, you know, to not be mindless consumers of information, but to be active participants, active learners, and to really equip students with the skills that they need to question and um, dig deep and rethink and reimagine and not just to take in information and assume that that is the be all and end all. Um, loved it. It was so good. Um, I think even if, you know, I've been a stay at home mom, a work from home mom and a working mom. I'm telling you that to say no matter what you do professionally or not, um, because books like this tend to be um, marketed towards professionals in the workplace or in corporate America, education, what have you. No matter what you do, this book is an invaluable resource just in relationships, whether it's in parenting, um, you know, romantic relationships. This book is so good for everybody. Check it out, please. You will not regret it. So these are the books that I read in the month of July, and it was quite a reading month indeed. I read Miss Benson's Beetle. I read Pride and Prejudice, Yinka, Where's Your Husband, Honey and Spice, Passing and Think Again. And you know what, y'all? Passing was a five-star prediction. And if you want to see my other five-star predictions, check out this video right here. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.